morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, June the 3rd, and the first thing I wanted to do is thank those of you who came to my house in your cars with your parents with beautiful signs and flowers and delicious bread. Thank you, Eider. Um, it was the best, probably the best birthday I've had in many, many years, so thank you so much. Um, today, we're going to read a book um, by an author that we've read before. Her name is Judith Fjorst, and it's got the same character, Alexander who used to be rich last Sunday. The other book that we read, he had a very bad day, and I can't always remember the full title of it, but that's also, I read that to you, I think the first week that we started doing these um, distance learning. So let's begin. It isn't fair that my brother Anthony has two dollars and three quarters and one dime and seven nickels and 18 pennies. Like he's having another bad day. It isn't fair that my brother Nicholas has one dollar and two quarters and five dimes and five nickels and 13 pennies. It isn't fair because what I've got is bus tokens. And this book was written when you took a bus, you used a token to get onto the bus. And most of the time, what I've mostly got is bus tokens. And even when I'm very rich, I know pretty soon what I'll have is bus tokens. I know because I used to be rich last Sunday. Last Sunday, Grandma Betty and Grandpa Louie came to visit from New Jersey. They brought lox because my father likes to eat lox. They brought plants because my mother likes to grow plants. They brought a dollar for me and a dollar for Nick and a dollar for Anthony because mom says it isn't nice to say this. We like money a lot, especially me. My father told me to put the dollar away to pay for college. He was kidding. Anthony told me to use a dollar to go downtown to a store and buy a new face. Anthony stinks. Anthony. Nikki said to take a dollar and bury it in the garden and in a week a dollar tree would grow. Ha ha ha. Mom said if I really want to buy a walkie talkie, save my money. Saving money is hard. Because last Sunday, when I used to be rich, I went to Pearson's drugstore and I got bubble gum. And after the gum stopped tasting good, I got more gum. And after that gum stopped tasting good, I got more gum. And even though I told my friend David I'd sell him all the gum in my mouth for a nickel, he still wouldn't buy it. Goodbye, 15 cents. Last Sunday when I used to be rich, I bet that I could hold my breath till 300. Anthony won. I bet that I could jump from the top of the stoop and land on my feet. Nikki won. It sounds like the whole week might not be good for Alexander. I bet that I could hide this purple marble in my hand and my mom would never guess which hand I was hiding it in. I didn't know that moms made children pay. Goodbye, another 15 cents. I absolutely was saving the rest of my money. I positively was saving the rest of my money. Except that Eddie called me up and said that he would rent me his snake for an hour. I always wanted to rent his snake for an hour. Goodbye, 12 cents. Anthony said, when I'm 99, I still won't have enough for a walkie-talkie. Nick said I'm too dumb to be let loose. My father said that there are certain words a boy can never say, no matter how ratty and mean his brothers are being. My father fined me five cents each for saying them. Goodbye, dime. Last Sunday, when I used to be rich, by accident, I flushed three cents down the toilet. A nickel fell through a crack when I walked on my hands. I tried to get my nickel out with a butter knife and also my mother's scissors. Goodbye, eight cents. 
and the butter knife and the scissors. Last Sunday, when I used to be rich, I found this chocolate candy bar just sitting there. I rescued it from being melted or smushed. Except the way I rescued it from being melted or smushed was that I ate it. How was I supposed to know it was Anthony's? Goodbye, 11 cents. I absolutely was saving the rest of my money. I positively was saving the rest of my money. But then Nick did a magic trick that made my pennies vanish in thin air. The trick to bring them back, he has not learned yet. Goodbye, four cents. Anthony said that even when I'm 199, I still won't have enough for a walkie-talkie. Nick said they should lock me in a cage. My father said that there are certain things a boy can never kick, no matter how ratty and mean his brothers are being. My father made me pay five cents for kicking it. Goodbye, Nickel. Last Sunday, when I used to be rich, Kathy around the corner at a garage sale, I positively only went to look. I looked at a half-melted candle. Oh, I needed that candle. I looked at a bear <coughs> with one eye. I needed that bear. I looked at a deck of cards that was perfect, except for no seven of clubs and no two of diamonds. I did not need that seven or that two. Goodbye, 20 cents. I absolutely was saving the rest of my money. I positively was saving the rest of my money. I absolutely positively was saving the rest of my money. Except I needed to get some money to save. I tried to make a tooth fall out. I could put it under my pillow and get a quarter, but no loose tooth. You see his mom in that picture? <laughs> I looked in Pearson's telephone booths for nickels and dimes that people sometimes forget, but no one forgot. I brought some non-returnable bottles down to Friendly's Market. Friendly's Market wasn't very friendly. I told my grandma and grandpa to come back soon. Last Sunday, when I used to be rich, I used to have a dollar. I do not have a dollar anymore. I've got this dopey deck of cards. I got this one-eyed bear. I've got this melted candle. And some bus tokens. Poor Alexander. So what was happening in that story, besides that Alexander was having a pretty bad week and losing all of his money, was that he was taking things away. Money was being taken away by either him buying things or losing that or being tricked out of his money. And that is called subtraction. So I thought it would be fun to do a little more bedtime math. And I have a couple of, a couple of problems and I already drew pictures of them. So let's see if I can get the right one up on the page. Here we go. Shaken bottle. Here's the picture. The pictures are always entertaining in this book. If you ever open a warm soda, watch out because it could bubble up and fizz all over you. That's because warm soda can't hold air bubbles in the liquid as well as cold soda. You can cause even bigger fizzation if you shake the soda really hard before opening it. The question is, can we do anything useful with that fizz? What if we could power our cars with shaken soda? Cars need a lot of fuel though. If you thought fighting over a soda with your brother or sister could get ugly, try duking it out with your SUV. All right, so here is our problem. If you have 10 cans of soda, and I drew little cans of soda here, but you've only kept five of them cold and left the rest sitting in the sun, how many sodas will explode when you open them? All right, so you only put five of them in the refrigerator. So those are safe, right? So here are 10 cans of soda. There's the number 10. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 cans of soda. 
So we're going to get rid of five because we put them in the refrigerator. One, two, three, four, five. So those are all in the refrigerator. Right? In fact, if you want, I'll draw a little refrigerator. Like the one in our classroom. Okay? So let's see how many are left. We took five away from 10. And if we were going to write that down, you'd say 10 minus 5 equals, which is pretty fancy. Let's see how many are left. You might already know. In fact, I'm going to hold it up a little longer so you can count the soda cans that are left. And now I'll count with you. One, two, three, four, five. So if you have 10 cans of soda and you put five in the refrigerator, five of those cans are gonna stay warm and will probably explode. All right, I think that you guys did a good job with that, I can tell, even though I'm not with you, I have a feeling. All right, we're gonna do one more. This one is about writing on a fucking bronco. If I can just find my piece of paper, there we go. The buck stops here. Most people don't like to be told what to do, and animals like it even less. The one who likes it the least could be the bull, a male cow with big horns and an even bigger attitude. If you're looking for an animal that doesn't want anyone riding him, a bull is a good choice. In a bull riding contest, you have to hang on with just one hand and stay on the furious bucking bull for eight seconds in order to score points. The bull gets points too for kicking his hardest to buck you off. So here is our question. If you're riding a bull and you've hung on for five seconds so far, how many more seconds do you have to ride him to reach eight seconds and to score points? So for this one, I actually made a number line, which I think we've done in the class before. A number line is a line with numbers on it. And this, this number line starts at zero and goes on for infinity. Ours, um, goes to 12 here, but the arrows mean that it keeps going on and on and on and on and on. All right, so we've already been on the Bucking Bronco for five seconds. You guys find the number five right here, All right? So we started with no seconds and one, two, three, four, five. There's our five seconds, right? <laughs> and we have to get to eight seconds, which is right here. So we have to count from five to eight. We do that on the calendar when we count every day, when we're trying to figure out when someone's birthday is or when a holiday is. So we're gonna start on five and we're gonna go one, two, three. We jumped three little hops to get to eight. So the answer is we have to hang on for three more seconds. And there's a lot of ways to write that. I'll write it, I'll write it two different ways. You can say five plus three equals eight. That's what we did on our number line. We started at five and we counted up to get to number eight. And if you wanna get really tricky, and this might be confusing, but I will write it. We have to get to eight seconds, right? So if we started at eight and had to go to back down to five, we would go the same thing. One, two, three, we'd still get to five. So we would say eight minus three, we take away three seconds, equals five, where we started. All right, you guys, I hope you have an amazing day. Um, I will see you on Friday with Kevin, and we're having a guest reader, Arjun Atruthan. The culinary arts teacher is gonna join us. He's gonna read a story that he wrote, and it's a how-to. It's called How to Make a Quesadilla. So he's gonna teach us how to do that. And um, spend some time doing some math. Um, when you're eating and you have like a whole pizza, count how many pieces are in your pizza. And then if you give like two to your sister, two to your brother, I don't know if anyone has all those people in their family <laughs> and their parents, find out how many you've taken away and, um, and do some math together as a family, it's a lot of fun. All right, I look forward to seeing you, bye.